Hello everyone and welcome to TV Talks, the show where I take a look at both the good and the bad of what television has to offer, and today is the first episode of a very, very big project I'm doing, reviewing every single season of The Simpsons. Every single one, and that means watching 600 episodes again, because I've already seen them all at least twice or so. But, no, um, let's watch them again then. So how this whole thing is going to work is I'm just going to go episode by episode giving them their own little TV talks review, so to speak. You know, just giving the off-the-cuff feelings of what it was like watching them and what I think of them. I won't be giving them a score or ranking or rating or any of that. I'll just be telling you how I feel about it and then at the end we'll just see what kind of experience this season was overall. For more information about The Simpsons' background and how it caught fire and then the decline and stuff, just... Go back to my original TV Talks The Simpsons video, because here, I'm just talking about the episodes. Well, yes, I probably will mention some of the background stuff for Aftermath, because for some episodes like The Principal and the Popper or, or A Star is Burns, those things are pivotal for the review. But as it stands, we're doing this first season of The Simpsons, which aired in 1989 to 1990. And it was a very, very rough process to get this thing out, like I mentioned. Like I said, for more information, go back to that first video. So, let's see how The Simpsons' first foray into the world of television went. Aside from the Tracy Ullman shorts, of course, but we don't really like to remember those. First is the season finale, I mean, premiere, <laughs> The Simpsons Roasting Over an Open Fire. This episode's a very simple story, of course, given that it was accidentally the pilot episode. Oh well. It's about, basically, the Simpson family trying to get money for Christmas presents after, you know, Bart gets a tattoo and all, and Homer fails as a mall Santa. <laughs> so yeah, like I said previously, this was not supposed to be the first episode of the show, but rather the last episode of the season. But because Klasky, Cupo, Chupo, whatever, messed up on animating all the other episodes, this is the only one that could be fit to air, and yeah, the animation is not great. I mean, it's not awful like Dingo Pictures quality or Patty the Pelican quality, but even still, this is not very good. Oh well, the animation is just a little bit of a problem, but how's the rest of it? The rest of it's pretty good, I gotta say. There's a lot of really funny moments in there, although not immensely funny like The Simpsons would eventually become. They're very, very much finding their footing, oddly enough. Like I said, season finale and whatnot. The Christmas spirit is definitely here with Homer and Bart going to the racetrack and desperately trying to, you know, get all the money so that they can give their family a Merry Christmas after all because, well, it seems like for them, without all the presents and stuff, it won't work out. But it's clear that they're going to find, you know, the really important things of Christmas being a dog, Santa's little helper. Yep, uh, that's how they got Santa's little helper in this whole thing. He was originally a race dog, because they don't use race horses over at the Downs. And he, he's apparently really, really, really bad at what he does, so he got let go, and then the Simpsons picked him up. So that's how we got this dog. Overall, the episode's very simple, kind of plain, but still pretty enjoyable to watch. I watch it every year, I confess it to that. And it's a very nice special, albeit not the best Christmas special that they would eventually come out with, but for a first episode, it introduces the characters well. It shows Bart's mischievous nature, Homer's bumbling antics, kind of, we'll get into that as this goes on, Marge's kind motherly nature, Lisa's Lisa-ness, and then Maggie being just the baby who doesn't really get to do anything. So yeah, overall good introduction to the characters and a pretty decent episode, albeit a little strange at times, given, you know, the animation and some of the writing. Next is Bart the Genius. Bart copies off of Martin's test and then gets put into a school for geniuses where it's very clear that he does not fit in. You know, that regular standard kind of plot that you get in a lot of sitcoms? And that is kind of the way I can describe this episode, regular and standard. You've seen this kind of plot on basically every sitcom, animated or not, where someone cheats on something and then gets some sort of accolade that they don't deserve, then they end up coming clean, and then everything's all solved by the end of it, bada bing, bada boom. This one is, I guess, of these plots, the one of the better ones. I mean, it has a pretty interesting spin on it. 
It's very fun to see Bart in the Genius School, but even then, you know exactly what's gonna happen. Well, I mean, of course everyone does, because you know Bart's not gonna stay in the Genius School, but even still, you can basically recite all the plot points that's going to happen. Although, they do throw a couple twists in there with nobody ever really finding out until Bart just has to come clean and tell them. Like, even after he's failing all of his classes, the principal still thinks that he's, a, like, a genius and stuff, and that why he wants to go back to Springfield Elementary is because he wants to do a study on regular kids. It's stuff like that. It's little things in there that make this episode a bit above average, like, C-plus level. I wouldn't say it's just plain and ordinary and boring like it sounds, but it's not as exciting or interesting as the show would go on to be. And, well, when I think of a standard episode that just kind of does everything by the books, I definitely think of this one. Why? Weren't you listening? But I can excuse them for using one of these stock plots because, well, it's the first season and I guess the second episode, but even still, it's fine. They're trying to figure out what's gonna work, what's not gonna work, and this kind of worked. I mean, it was pretty decent, but yeah, it's a good thing that they kind of moved on from doing stuff like this. Next up is Homer's Odyssey. Homer loses his job at the nuclear plant and then goes through an existential crisis. So after two episodes that were pretty much focused on comedy with very little story focus, although the first one had a little bit more of a focus than on story than Bart the Genius. This one is definitely the first serious episode. You know how the, I mentioned that The Simpsons like to do a lot of story-based ones and really give you the feels. This one is the one where they're trying to test the waters for that one. And I'd say it works pretty well. Although the first, like, third is definitely humor-based, most certainly with Bart's class going to a field trip to the nuclear plant, Sherry and Terry causing trouble, Wendell trying not to vomit. <laughs> Although one little thing I want to note for this, uh, third, first third, Miss Carbopple's lines don't sync up to what she's saying. Like, the animation, it doesn't sync up right. There will be an occasional line where it does sync up, but especially when she's calling out Bart before they leave, it does not match. And there's some times where her mouth is moving, and there's no sound coming out. And it's just really weird. Good thing they switched to animation studios after this, because, yeah, if The Simpsons always had issues like this, I don't really think people would have taken too kindly to that. So yeah, Homer loses his job, and then he ends up getting all depressed because he doesn't think he can do anything else. Which, yeah, Homer is kind of a bumbling idiot who can't really do anything, so I guess it makes sense for this to happen. Then Homer eventually leads to the realization that he is pathetic and can't do anything, so he tries to actually kill himself. Yeah, uh, okay, third episode in the first season and they're already playing that card. Gutsy, I guess, but yeah, it's a... Uh, Definitely an interesting thing to throw in there. Although, because there, this is kind of starting off and it's just kind of new, the one downside to this is they don't really play it up as much. Not for humor, of course, but for story. They just kind of show the family being shocked and try to stop them. They don't really show a wide array of emotion. They don't really show their, like, super desperateness to get them back. They just show that they're worried about them. Which, alright, I, I understand you guys are new, fine. Don't expect me to be so nice though when it gets on to like season 7 or something. Just saying, first season is always the roughest to get out because you're trying to find your footing and find what works and doesn't work. So then Homer decides to become a safety guy. Not safety inspector, but just a safety man. He is all about safety, whether it be no yelling signs, no smoking signs, children at play signs, he puts them all over Springfield. Then people start liking it at first, but then they get really fed up. This is both funny and kind of serious, because it shows that Homer finally found something that he's good at, you know, establishing safety. And it also is funny because he's just taking it to such an extreme, to the point where people can't even really do anything anymore. But then finally he targets the nuclear plant, and the evil Mr. Burns decides to give Homer the safety inspector job. Which Homer is happy about because now he can make sure that Springfield is safe. Except for the fact that in every single episode after this, he's just sleeping at his post. To the point where sometimes even a dog has to do his job for him. 
Okay, oh well, it, it's a nice ending to the episode, and this overall episode is very well done. Albeit not the most well put together the story ones, but it's definitely a good sign of what's to come, and showing that the writers can definitely handle this kind of episode. There's no disgrace like home. Homer becomes embarrassed after his family ruins the employee picnic at Mr. Burns' mansion, so he tries to show them that families don't act this way, to no avail, and then signs them up to go to therapy with Dr. Marvin Monroe, which seems to go as well as you expect. I liked the last three episodes pretty decently. But I gotta say, this one is easily the best one so far. I mean, I know there's only four, but still, this is easily the best. This one is r really close to actually what The Simpsons would become. It's got so many great jokes, it's got so many great lines, it's also got a bit of heart in there, and it's really well put together. Seems like they actually did find their footing with this one, because this one would be right at home in something like in season 4 or 5 or onward or something. There's only one little issue I have with this one, and that's that, well, it doesn't really make sense for Homer to get upset about his family embarrassing him. Isn't Marge normally that kind of person, or even Lisa? I guess if we could see a new side of Homer, but it just doesn't seem quite right, even to the point where he sells the family TV to afford the therapy with Dr. Marvin Monroe. Now think about this, would a Homer we know today ever do that? Yeah, yeah, finding footing, I know that, 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 that. Also, one other small note is that the jokes are great in this one, especially like a lot of the visual ones where Homer and the family are spying on other families to see how they work and they operate, but then they end up spying in their own house. Now, that was funny enough, but if the animation was just a little bit cleaner, a little smoother, it probably would have been a lot funnier because the transition is a little odd. But, well, they're great enough as is. It's very well done. The therapy session with Monroe is hilarious. Very well done. Go check it out. The, even the beginning where they're at Burns' picnic, that's really great. Like where they bring in all this gelatin dessert stuff and it turns out Mr. Burns hates it. And he complains that someone just blabbed that he loves this stuff even though it's, he thinks it's just revolting. And it was Homer's fault. <laughs> and some guy gets fired because his son doesn't want to be there. Another little note is that the line delivery is slowly becoming like it would be in the later seasons. The dialogue before this was kind of slow, it was kind of drawn out a little bit, and it was just kind of spoken plainly. This one, it's a lot more energetic, it's a lot faster, and of course the characters are finding their voices a lot more. Also, this is the first appearance of Itchy and Scratchy, albeit for like 10 seconds. But still, they're there, and it's their very first appearance. Woo! This episode was very well put together. And definitely a good sign of what was to come, because this is probably where they found their writing style that they liked. This episode was a big hit when it came out, a lot of people really did like this one. So, of course, why not try to pursue episodes like that? Had a lot of pop culture in there, have a lot of really clever writing, and also put in a little touch of family togetherness. Albeit, not too much. You know, given this episode being about how the family is just insane. Easily the best one so far. Bart the General is about Bart getting picked on by Nelson, and then seeking to defend himself. Another stock plot with Bart the blank, for a title. This one I like a little bit more than Bart the Genius though, but not incredibly much. I mean, it's another decent one, I suppose, and it's a bit better than that stock plot, because at least it does throw in a little bit of interesting stuff, like Bart taking it to such an extreme to get a crazed war veteran to help him out, you know, Herman, the character who is very strange and quite unstable when it comes to every single thing about him, even to the point where he's portrayed as completely different characters in a lot of episodes, but yeah, who cares. Nelson's, of course, a really fun bully, even right from the beginning, as it turns out. Yeah, they always knew what he was going to be, just this crazy, over-the-top bully stereotype who's so much fun to watch. <laughs> Herman and Nelson are what make this episode really stand out, because if it weren't for those two characters, this episode would be kind of like what Bart the Genius was. Just kind of standard, kind of regular, you could tell what's coming, because you know that Bart's going to win in the end, blah, 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 blah. This one does have a lot of great quotes, like, you made me bleed my own blood, from Nelson. Or Homer saying that, in Bart's dream where he has a funeral, saying that the funeral was good because it got him out of work, and then Marge has to remind him to be sad. 
Even that, that was really funny. And of course, that all has to do with Nelson, and then Herman's got his own bits of stuff, being all crazy. Introduction of Grandpa. Those are the elements of this that really make it shine. I mean, the story's fine, the animation's getting better, I suppose. This is probably one of the ones they sent in last or something, I don't know. It's fine, it's decent. Not one that I seek out all the time to go watch, but you know what? I'm happy that I do see it, because it's at least, a, it's good for a couple laughs every so often. Albeit there are some clunky moments, but that's to be expected in the first season, right? So let's get on to the next one. Moaning Lisa. Lisa is sad because... Um, so she goes to seek out Bleeding Gums Murphy to help her with sac the saxophone. <laughs> Oh, well, she doesn't really seek him out, I suppose, but finds him at, yeah, you know what I mean. So, the big problem with the episode was in the description right there. Lisa is sad because... <laughs> the whole episode just hinges on how upset and depressed Lisa is. But it's missing one key element. A reason! I mean, she says that nothing matters and everything is pointless, but what brought this on? Why is she feeling this way? What's happening? I mean, it hints that because Bart is being really mean to her and stuff, but shes he doesn't really seem that bad in this one. He's not really seeking her out to make her miserable. He's just acting like Bart. If anything, he's picking on Homer in this one with his subplot, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then there's times where Lisa just feels unfulfilled, and then sometimes it's because she thinks she's no good at anything. its It's just weird. And then there's the whole beginning where it just drags out with a bunch of repetitive segments where... She's upset in music class. She's upset in gym class. She's upset at home. And it's basically the same thing over and over again. Lisa has a problem. Someone takes notice. She tries to explain herself, but nobody really cares. It's just that like three or four times over and over and over again. Then she finds Bleeding Gums Murphy and sings her song, which again points to Bart, but again, he wasn't really being that bad. I mean, are you being in reference to other episodes? If you're going by other episodes, he's just being a normal older brother. He's not really being as bad as a brother could be or as Bart would become, but you kind of have to establish that. It doesn't really make any sense. Of course, Bleeding Gums Murphy is a lot of fun, but I don't know. It's just something about the story just doesn't seem right without that explanation in there. And then there's Homer's subplot that I mentioned, which is okay. It's that... Bart keeps beating him at a boxing video game that's kind of similar to Punch-Out, and he gets driven and crazy by it. One thing is that when this is set up, you don't know that this is going to be the subplot. Actually, I don't think anyone could have guessed because it's just shown as a one-off joke at first. Then they keep bringing it back and back, and then you realize, oh wait, they're trying to run with this and make it a story. Fun? Well, it's kind of fun. Sort of. It's alright. It's decent. But this episode overall, I don't really like it very much. It's not bad per se, but it's definitely not good. If it wasn't for Homer's subplot in there, I definitely wouldn't like this one. And I can see what they're trying to do. They're trying to establish sympathy for Lisa. And of course, it's a very nice thing to do. And it's very important for her character development. But they went about it all wrong. And just put this one kind of like a middle of the road while slightly leaning towards the bad side. It's not awful or anything, but definitely not one that I'll seek out anytime soon. It's also kind of a forgettable episode. Uh, I keep forgetting that the subplot even exists, and before I saw this episode again to watch it for the review, I just thought I forgot what Lisa's reason was, but nope. Nope, there is none. They just don't explain it. Okay. And let's just move on to the next one. Call of the Simpsons. <laughs> so, there are two episodes in season one that are considered to be, like, just as good as the episodes of the Simpsons later on. This one, and another one that I'll be talking about towards the end. Call of the Simpsons is probably one of the most popular season one episodes because of its premise. Homer buys a really bad RV and gets the family lost in the wilderness, and then they have to fend for themselves. Which is a very good concept. Having to see the Simpsons, you know, being the crazy family from hell that they are, they have to go out and fend for themselves and live like animals. 
And then, of course, there's the classic scene where Homer tries to trap an animal and it goes horribly wrong. There's all the jokes you'd expect, but they're all really well done. The animation here actually is getting a bit better. It's all improving. Good job, Klasky, Chupo, Chupo, ah, I don't know. Homer's idiot persona is really shining here. He's no longer the Walter Matthau, slightly bumbling gentleman person that he was in the Tracy Ullman shorts or very early on in the season. No, he's the full-out idiot here. It's a lot of fun to watch. This is also the first episode with a guest star. That's right. Albert Brooks is in this episode. And he does a great job, of course. It's Albert Brooks. Why wouldn't he? And like most people, I always try to seek out this one whenever I want to laugh. Along with all the other episodes, of course, but you know what I mean. This one really does feel right at home with the others. It's very well put together, it's got its footing, it knows what it wants to do. It's kind of like there's no disgrace like home. Which I think that one should probably get a bit more credit than it does. This one really knows what it's doing, and it does it well. Good job, Call of the Simpsons. Next is the Telltale Head. Bart meets up with Jimbo, Dolph, and Kearney, the three resident evildoers of the town. And then he gets coaxed into cutting off the head of the statue of their town founder, Jebediah Springfield. And then that leads him and Homer to get in trouble. Before I really talk about what I think about this episode, I want to mention that this episode has a very, very big story problem with it. It's that the story doesn't even start until halfway through. The first 11 minutes or so is literally just filler. I'm not joking here. There's no setup with Jimbo, Dolph, and Kearney until like 11 or 10 minutes in or so. The rest of it is just all about Homer, you know, gambling and watching football and not wanting to go to church. Which I'll admit, it leads to a pretty funny scene with him listening to the football game in church and it's syncing up with what Reverend Lovejoy is saying. And then when he says something um, seemingly impactful... And then Homer is listening to the game, and then there's a touchdown for the team. He just shoots up and screams, yes! Yes! And then Reverend Lovejoy thinks that he struck a chord with Homer. It's a lot of fun. For that part, at least. The rest of the filler just kind of drags out and neanders. It's not even about Bart, it's about Homer. The only real setup we get is that Bart says he wants to go see a movie, and Marge says no. But that's towards the end of this. The first eight minutes before they mention that is nothing. And then they go back to two more minutes of nothing, and then Bart eventually decides to go out, and then when he tries to sneak into the movie, he meets those three. And then the story starts. Really, you could just skip the first bit, and then you'll kind of get what this whole thing is about, really. And what would you get when you skip it? You get a pretty decent story. I mean, it's not really laugh out loud funny, and that's one small issue I have is I can't really tell what kind of episode this is. Is it trying to be funny? Is it trying to be serious? Is it trying to be both? I don't know. Although the parts where he's talking with Jimbo and Dolphin Kearney are pretty amusing, like when they're watching the clouds float by. <laughs> and it's a pretty decent one. Not fantastic, but it's, it's alright. It's alright. It's fine. It's worth watching. Albeit not a ton. This is also a pretty famous one for just showing how bad Bart can be, cutting off the statue of the head of the town, head of the statue of the town founder. And also, I guess this gets everyone to freak out, of course. Even Mr. Burns, the evil Mr. Burns, is upset with the statue getting his head cut off. Yeah, like I said, they're trying to find the characters' personalities, so I don't fault them for that. Overall, relatively decent. Pretty good. What else can I say? Now we get to Life in the Fast Lane. After Homer buys Marge a bowling ball for him for her birthday, Marge goes to the bowling alley to use it and then meets up with some guy named Jacques and they end up kinda sort of falling in love, kind of, maybe? And then that little bit there with the whole kinda little confusing aspect is not the worst part of the episode. But I want to mention something. This is not only Matt Groening's second favorite episode, but this is also the first episode of The Simpsons to win an Emmy. And folks, I don't get it. I hate this episode. Easily. I, one of the worst of the season. For one big reason. 
So, like I said, Homer buys Marge a bowling ball for him on her birthday, meaning that he bought a bowling ball to give Marge as a present, knew she wouldn't like it, and then says, Oh well, if you don't like it, I'll just take it myself. <laughs> but then she ends up kind of utilizing it, and then she ends up kind of bonding with this guy, and then she is supposed to come to terms that she really does love Homer, and she doesn't want to be seen with this guy because it might trouble her marriage and stuff. And this is the problem. It's putting the learning the lesson on the wrong character. Marge learns a lesson here after being wronged. So Homer never really learns anything. Homer, I don't even really think, finds out about this whole thing. And this isn't just some overanalyzing thing ever. This has bugged me ever since I first saw this episode when I was like, I don't know, 13 or so. This episode should be about, you know, the same thing that happened. Marge getting... The bowling ball, and then she goes out to use it and then bonds with the guy, and then Homer finds out, realizes that he is an idiot and a jerk, and then he goes to seek Marge out and try to fix everything. And then th that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be so bad, would it? Come on! It would be a better story, it'd be better because it'd be more like what The Simpsons would become, and also we'd probably get an ending! This episode has an ending with Marge coming to, back to Homer, but what about Jacques? He never finds out. The last time we see him is he's like applying aftershave or something. He never finds out, he never really gets a satisfying ending, nothing really happens. I don't get it. It's not even really funny either, the few jokes that they do try, it doesn't really work. This episode's also really forgettable too when it comes to stuff that's not the glaring story issues. I can't find anything to redeem this one. I don't like it. I really don't. Matt Groening, please explain to me why you like this one so much, because I just don't get it. Let's just move on. Homer's night out. At a bachelor party that Homer told Marge was going to be a really sophisticated evening, it's actually a rowdy, rowdy party, and he takes a picture, gets his picture taken with a stripper. And then that gets spread around town, and then Marge becomes angry because why wouldn't she? He's dancing with a stripper. And then Homer has to tell Bart about, you know, the importance of women and how they're not objects. Good lesson, I gotta say. So, uh, this episode lately, for a few people, it makes them kind of angry because they say that it doesn't seem like what Homer does is really that bad. Which, I'll admit, it's not as bad as the episode plays it out to be, but he's dancing with a stripper at a rowdy party that he told Marge was going to be a sophisticated evening, all behind her back. Pretty sure he knew this was going to happen. So it's the lying thing, it's the objectifying women thing, you know, that kind of stuff. The speech Homer gives at the end is actually very nice and is how should how feminists should be carrying out their message instead of yelling and screaming and acting like idiots. That is the kind of important thing, saying that they're people too. They're just like, uh... How men are, they have feelings, they're, they have interests, they're real people, and they shouldn't be objectified and should really just be treated like how we are, as equals. It's a very nice message and very important and a very poignant one too, and it's not too preachy. There's of course Bart's subplot with his spy camera that kind of gets dropped midway through, but that's okay. Because really it's mostly there to set up Homer's story. The Simpsons isn't quite ready to tackle on two plots at the same time quite yet. I mean, look at Moaning Lisa. That didn't turn out so well. But I can understand if you don't like this one. I mean, it's fine. It is a little clunky at times and it's not incredibly funny. Except for like the part where Bart orders the squid and it actually does come. It's, it's hard to explain why that one works. Check it out for yourself and see if you really like it or not. So we're down to three episodes, people. Buckle up. The Crepes of Wrath. Bart goes to France for, as an ex for a student exchange program, and then a little boy comes to Springfield in Bart's place and becomes a really nice child. Uh, this is a subplot one where the subplot is far, 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 far better than the main plot. The main plot, I don't like it. It's literally just Bart getting tortured over and over again by these two random French people who are jerks. That's really all there is to the episode. It's just Bart getting mistreated, Bart getting mistreated, so on and so forth. Oh no, he sees that they're putting antifreeze in the wine and then they get arrested and then Bart comes home and never tells anybody about what happens. It's unfulfilling, it's unsatisfying, it's not really funny, it's just kind of bleh. Then there's a subplot which barely gets any focus, especially halfway through. 
where Homer starts showing around the new foreign exchange student kid that's staying with them, and he tries to steal secrets from the nuclear plant. That is a much better story, and it's a lot funnier. However, it gets sidelined by the main story with Bart and the two French evildoers, which, like I said, is not very fun or funny or really anything. If they would have just switched focus to that, that would have been a lot better. Or maybe if Bart did something like really, really terrible in the beginning or something to warrant this, it'd be funny. It's kind of like the Spongebob effect where Squidward gets tortured all the time, but he needs to do something really bad or act really badly in order to deserve it. This is kind of like the ones that don't work, albeit not nearly that bad, because at least Bart gets a happy ending, sort of, kind of, maybe. That's all I can really say about that one. I mean, I don't like it. I do consider it bad, but it's nowhere near as bad as the other one that I mentioned just two episodes ago. Now Krusty gets busted. Krusty robs the Quickie Mart and then gets arrested even though he claims he didn't do it. Bart loses all faith in his hero, but still tries to find out who actually did it because he keeps trying to believe that Krusty actually didn't do it. This one is just like how The Simpsons would have done it later on. This is that second one that's really, really popular for good reason. It introduces, kind of, sort of, well, his first speaking role at least, Sideshow Bob, originally going to be voiced by James Earl Jones of Darth Vader fame, but then they went with Kelsey Grammer, who I think actually was a much better choice. Sideshow Bob is my favorite character on The Simpsons, and now he really gets to shine. And actually, I'm kind of rooting for him in this one. Krusty was awful to him. I'm surprised Bob's not dead at this point. And Bob actually did do a really good job of making that children's show. It's very intellectual, it's very upbringing, it's positive, it's supportive, but it also is fun for children. It's just unfortunate that he had to go to such a degree in order to get what he wanted. And also, in the, the episode even kind of points it out too. It makes you kind of realize that Bob did go through a lot of stuff, and Bob really does have good intentions in mind. Yeah, starting off, before he was a homicidal maniac, Sideshow Bob was actually well-intentioned. He felt like getting Krusty in jail was actually going to benefit the community and the world in general. He was a strong advocate of the people, you know, those kind of people that say, like, Oh, children are smart, children are very, more, very intelligent, we need to give them more credit than they get. He's an advocate of that kind of philosophy. Which is very good, and even Bart starts getting kind of won over by Sideshow Bob. But in the end, of course, there's a very good twist in there. Of course, we all know he did. I mean, come on, it's been like 30 years, people, just about. All right, 27, you get what I mean. So, we all know it's Bob, but like the way they find out it's him is actually really well done. I'm not going to ruin it here, but let's face it, you probably already know. This one's very well done, it's very suspenseful, it's very good, has very good plot, it's actually really funny too, a lot of really good jokes. And it's also the first episode where Patty and Selma actively despise Homer. Yep, because, well, Homer badmouths him in the Quickie Mart and they take it to heart. <laughs> and then, of course, that leads to a bunch of stuff down the road. Krusty gets busted, very well done. Now our last episode, Some Enchanted Evening. Homer and Marge go out on a date, and then they leave a deranged maniac to be their babysitter. But of course they don't know that she's a deranged maniac, but what she does is she, like, attacks, the, she attacks the kids of the homes she babysits and then robs them blind. This ba episode's basically Home Alone with The Simpsons. But that's not a bad thing, it's actually really good and it's really funny. The ways that the Homer... The ways that Bart and Lisa, sorry, uh, go out to try to stop this crazy bandit are really fun and really exciting. Like I said, it's a bit Home Alone-esque, but I'm pretty sure that was intentional. Or was it? Because here's the thing, Home Alone came out the same year, 1990. Hmm. Could it really have been that Home Alone ripped off The Simpsons? Probably not, it's probably just a like, coincidence or something, but either way, the episode's a lot of fun, and I'm pretty sure you've all seen it by now. It's one of those pretty popular ones, albeit not up there with Krusty Gets Busted. And so folks, that was The Simpsons Season 1. Overall, I'd say it was a pretty nice experience. It's the Archibald Seal of Approval. This one is definitely a sizably bit rough. 
Uh, especially given the animation and stuff, but overall it's not nearly as awkward or weird as people have said it is. I mean, yeah, it's not nearly as good as what The Simpsons would become, but for what it is, I'd say it's pretty decent, and I can kind of see why it started becoming popular with this. And yeah, it does give off the vibe of we're trying to figure ourselves out, and we're trying to see what we can do and what we can get away with, but what first season isn't? Even stuff that had a really good first season, like Total Drama, even then, it gave off the vibe. Overall, though, this was a very nice experience and I'm happy to have seen it. So, let's talk about the episodes. My favorite one was Krusty Gets Busted with There's No Disgrace Like Home being at second. And then my least favorite was obviously Life in the Fast Lane and then The Crepes of Wrath being probably the runner-up for that one. Overall, though, I'd say it was pretty good. I mean, yeah, I can definitely say that this is uh, not a season I'm going to be seeking out a lot, but it was fine. It was good. Happy to have seen it. Let's see what season two has to bring. What did you guys think of season one, folks? And what was your favorite or least favorite episode? Tell me below. Let me know. See you next time.